So welcome to this, uh, I think it's my third session on the on the topic of Aula Bienestar y Orientación, but probably you, uh, you've been dealing with some other topics. Today we're going to be talking about time management and, and independent study. And uh, well, just uh, the first thing that I, I'd like to say is uh, thank you for taking the time to be here with me today, Irene. Uh, and thank you for uh, to the rest of the of the students who are going to take the time to 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 watch this conference in the future uh, at other moments. Okay, because I know that these days it's very complicated to establish <laughs> time and scheduling for like extra things that you are very busy. I guess uh, studying for your uh, final exams and for your eval. I guess. So uh, in case you're, you're taking it, and, and well, it's I, I feel really grateful that you're here. Irene, let me know a little bit about your profile. Are you a student of second of diploma, or are you uh, in first year? I'm in first of bachelor. Okay, first. Okay, so you are now dealing with the with the ending of the course. Great, because mm -hmm. the other days I had students who were preparing the their final exams for, well, for the EVAU, uh, but in your case, you still have another year to go. Okay, great. <laughs> so, uh, I normally give you some uh, rules to, to, to collaborate, okay, to interact during the session. So, uh, because sometimes the sound uh, is not so good, please, if you want to open your microphone, Raise your hand before you. You see that you have here. Uh, uh, I'm gonna point it. That you have here this little icon that says raise hand, so that I know that you're gonna open the microphone. The rest of the time, please keep it closed so that we don't have problems with the sound. Because sometimes I don't know how you say that in English, but se acopla el sonido. Okay, so uh, if you wanna participate, you wanna say something. Uh, just uh, let me know. Okay. I guess that uh, someone else is doing it now. Uh, yes, yeah, Sara. Sara, welcome. <laughs> I already know Sara because she she attended two of the previous sessions with me. So I'm very happy that you're here, Sara. Uh, and then uh, again, um, we can use the chat just to to leave a question or something that I would like to to answer uh, by the time I think it uh, corresponds to some of the topics we are, we are dealing with. At the end of the session, we will have a few minutes for questions. If you ever uh, think of other questions that you can have, uh, you can send them later uh, using my my email address that you have there, Eteba, sorry, at ucjc.edu. Uh, Okay, and uh, even if we are just the three of us, I'll, I'll try to collaborate using uh, virtual rooms, okay, to, to discuss in small groups. That is something that I like, that you discuss yourselves, your ideas, and, and, and then, that. And then, well, uh, uh, so I, I already know that Irene is, is, uh, is in the first year of, uh, of bachillerato, and Sara, uh, I think you were in second year, right? Yes, I'm in second year. Okay, great. <laughs> I remember you from other sessions. Uh, well, just about me, uh, a little bit, Sara knows me, but Irene, I would like you to know that I'm a professor at uh, Universidad Camilo José Pela. I have been working for the, for the university for 15 years now, but also I am a consultant in the, in the educational market. And, uh, and I run my own company that is called Educando. Uh, this is my personal website in case you want to visit it, uh, just to, to know a little bit about, about me and about the way I, I conceive education and uh, the way uh, I'd like it to change and to transform for the future of, of this country and for the future of the world, because I think that really education is one of the most important things uh, to uh, to change the world, okay, and to make it a, a, a better place to live in. Uh, so, I'd like to, uh, to, to ask you, at this point, uh, how do you organize your time when, when you have to study? What do you do? 
Now you can open your microphones. If, if you raise your hand, I know which one is, is, is trying to, to say something. But let me know, how you organize it? I'm not very efficient with my time. I, I, I do not have uh, many problems when it comes to start doing my homework. But uh -huh. uh, I, I do know how much time I need to do things, but I'm very slowly at doing things and exercises and works in general. Okay, okay, thank you, Sarah. And what about you, Irene? How do you organize your time? More or less the same as Sarah. Um, I, I don't really know. It depends today. I don't have a plan. So you don't have a plan. It's just that you know that you have to do some homework and you have to study, but you don't you don't plan it ahead. Okay, is that? Yes, it's that. Okay, thank you. Well, actually, I would have to say that uh, the secret for effective time management when you have to study, um, well, when you go to university, that's something that you have to do. It's about planning, planning, planning. This is the most important idea, that you take a certain time to plan. Uh, not only because it's going to help you to have a sense of uh, fulfillment, in the sense that if you first plan the things that you have to do, and you have a list of things, and then you can, uh, you can cross it out, things that you've been doing, this gives you a sense, a sense of yeah, fulfillment, a, success, a, a, a sense of success. That okay, I am managing very well. I am doing all the all the things that I needed to do. And at the end of the week or of the month, you see all this list of things that you were able to do and to finish. And this leads you to a certain sense of, ooh, I'm good at this. And then it increases uh, your effectiveness. Okay, so. It's about planning, planning, planning. Even if sometimes at the very beginning, when you're starting to plan things, you think, oh my God, this takes so much time and so much effort to, to do a list or to, to decide how much time I'm going to take for this or for that. Uh, or uh, to decide, we'll see later, to decide which activity should I put first and then which ones would, le uh, would lead me to something that is more complex. So yeah, at the very beginning, you have a feeling that it takes a lot of energy, a lot of time when you're planning. But at the end, well, in a very short time, you'll see that it gives you a sense of control. And this sense of control leads to a more successful uh, and effective way of studying and to organize your time. And when you go to university, this is something that you'll have to do for sure. Okay, so I'm going to give you some tips, but I, I, I'd like to stop from time to time to discuss with you some of the ideas that we have been doing. Okay, so the first good idea is to prepare a calendar. I don't know if you're using a physical agenda. Are you? Do you use physical agendas like paper agendas or, or something like that or, or planners? I'm not. You don't? And Irene? I have, but I don't use it. You don't use it? Um, is there any reason why you don't use it? You don't think it's going to be useful? Or, or um, uh, I don't know. I just don't use it. OK, I, uh, I know that I am part of a generation that is not as digital as you are. But I always keep a physical agenda. Uh, uh, something you can write things on. Uh, why? Because, as I was saying before, when you start like, uh, preparing the to-do list, and then at the end you're able to cross it out, to cross out things, and you go back and you see how much work you've done in a week or in two weeks, uh, you feel really you feel really powerful. You know what I mean? That, uh, oh my God, I was able to finish all this work. So uh, I would recommend you to have a physical agenda or a digital agenda in your uh, in your smartphone or or in, uh, I don't know a planner with an app or something like that. I'm gonna give you some uh, 
advice on different apps that you can use. But uh, I would tell you to have like three different calendars in the same agenda. I have my, yeah, my paper agenda and I have a term, week and daily calendar. Okay, so in my term calendar, I include, uh, because I'm also a student at university, I'm, I'm taking this year experto en educación internacional. So uh, uh, the first thing that I write down is the assignments with their due dates, uh, so that I can I can uh, see them in advance. Okay, and then I, if I know that I have to prepare this project in a week time or so, I can decide how much time I'm gonna take for the whole week before the due date uh, is due, okay? Uh, then, uh, tests with the dates. And then, uh, any other kind of activities that I have to, to do. I don't know if I have to attend a webinar, if I have to, uh, to do a group study, or if I have to finish something with some names, whatever. Uh, in your case, that would be our school and extracurricular activities. Uh, when you go to university, you'll see that uh, occasions to do things together with people multiply. <laughs> That's a miracle. Then you have, oh my god, I have to go to this conference and I have to attend this webinar. And then I have to take time for this club that I am in. And then we have this meeting for organization. And then I have this dance class and blah, 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 blah. So it is a very good idea when you go to university to have all these calendars. Okay, but first of all, term calendars. Uh, and I recommend you even to use different colors so that you know that this is something that is like long term plan and then like short term things that you have. Okay? Then for your weekly or daily calendar, I would recommend you to write a to do list. Uh, because, because of two reasons. First, because the to-do list, like taking five minutes to think how many things do I have to do this week or how many things do I have to hand this week to teachers or to professors or uh, things that I don't have to forget, uh, would help you to concentrate and then once you have the list, you can prioritize, okay? Uh, I don't know if you attended Pilar Esther uh, conference on, on time management too. I know that she uh, preferred another session in Spanish, and I don't know if you were there. Were you? Yes, I attended. Okay, because because she mentioned two or three things that I'm going to mention too. Okay, uh, so uh, she mentioned the Eisenhower technique, uh, uh, and at some point I think that she also mentioned the, the matrix. Okay, so once you have the to-do list, try to use the Eisenhower matrix, matrix uh, to, to decide which things you have to, uh, to do before, to do it right now, uh, and then which ones you can either eliminate or just to ask for uh, help or to delegate in the sense that you can ask someone to do it for you or to, uh, yeah, to do with you in a group study or something like that. So once you have established how to prioritize things, weekly then you know how much time it's going to take there are weeks in which you have like three very urgent things but if you plan it well ahead you'll have enough time to uh not to feel overwhelmed because one of the worst things is just when you feel that oh my god i'm running out of time and i have to give this in, in two days i don't know because i have like three urgent things but then you remember that Three days ago, you were absolutely free. And so if you're planning ahead, if you're planning like with a week or so, you can establish all this pr uh, pr uh, prioritizing in a much better way, okay? So think about this. And then if you have like three or four urgent things the same day, then later on I'll give you some ideas that you can uh, also use to, to prioritize, okay? Uh, then one of the problems that we normally have, all of us, is time eaters. <laughs> time eaters normally for young students are like socializing, your smartphone with your uh, chats, your WhatsApp groups and things like that. For adults, my time consumer is uh, email 
I write it all the time, emails, emails, emails. I, I, at the end of the day, I can have perhaps 40 emails. So what I do is like, uh, when I know that there is a time eater, I decide that I'm gonna uh, have a look at it twice a day, for example, or three times a day, okay? Because sometimes those time eaters are also part of your working life, and they are also important, but they are not urgent. If you tend to look at this at the very beginning of a session, it's going to consume some of the time in which you still feel energetic, and this is not a very good idea. So uh, if you know that you're going to be receiving many emails or many messages or things like that, uh, decide that you're going to have a look at them once or two twice a day, for example, and decide which moment is best for you. For example, sometimes WhatsApp groups or messaging or even checking emails can be something that relaxes your mind in a way because it's something that has to do with social life or, okay, so you can uh, indulge, you can uh, take some time at the end of a very uh, hard study session just uh, just uh, to use as a way to, to relax you, okay? Uh, so, other thing to, to, to do is to look for a place, a study space, and decide which time is better for you. I don't know if you ever reflected upon what time of the day you are more energetic, or what time of the day is easier for you to focus on tasks. Have you ever thought about that? For example, in my case, is late at night because I uh, I prefer to study when everything is in peace, when there are no noises, noises around. And now in COVID times, during the this time in which we are all together at home, it is very difficult for me to find a place or to find a space <laughs> during the day where there are no noises and everything. So I tend to leave things that I need to concentrate upon at night, okay? Because it's the time when I can have all this uh, space around me with no noise, with my children are uh, in bed. For me, for example, this is good. But I don't know about you. Have you ever reflected upon this? What time of the day you are more active? Yeah, me too. I'm more effective uh, at, at late at night. Okay, and what about you, Irene? That was Sarah, I guess. <laughs> uh, or like in the late night or early morning? Early morning, yeah. Early morning is a good time for me too. Uh, when you are fresh and uh, yeah, early morning. Uh, if I have to prepare something that needs to have a, like a very established plan or something that is kind of more like a project, something that needs faces or things like that. I tend to do that in the morning when I'm fresh and then uh, yeah before before starting like classes or things like that. Uh, and I normally divide like in different periods during the week. If I know that I have to handle a project in a week or so, I divide uh, five short periods like an hour during every day during the week before the due date. And that's a good way to uh, to do something else that I'm going to tell you later, that is practicing in an inter intertwined uh, way, because uh, repetition and, and also like a, a space in times for learning, um, it's much more effective than doing massive practice. Okay, this is something that doesn't, doesn't work very well. Okay, uh, so uh, what about working with other people? For example, I am horrible with that, because I need to concentrate in a place where, uh, as I was saying, that is free of noise and people. But sometimes, if I am I am kind of tired and I still have things to do, uh, but th these are the typical things that are kind of mechanical, I prefer to go to a place where I can see other people working around me, for example, a library, because uh, uh, mirror neuron works, mirror mirror neuron means that you see other people around you doing something that increases your responsibility or your effectiveness. You know what I mean? And sometimes if I am tired and I see that if I stay home alone, 
I'm going to procrastinate or I'm going to uh, get up and go to the fridge or whatever, I decide to go to a place where I can see other people working. Sometimes it's my husband. <laughs> I enter the space where he is working. The only problem is my husband loves the radio, uh, to have the radio on. And I am a person who needs to have silence. So <laughs> if I go to work to the same place where he is, uh, sometimes it's hard because I oblige, I force him to, to turn the, the radio off when he doesn't like it. <laughs> but how, how about working in a library? Does it give you the sense that you are more effective or, or not? What about you? I never went to a library or some place like that to work but I think that in university I might spend most of my time in the library so I might need to adapt. Yeah but you see that uh, there are times in which you need to concentrate and to focus and probably it's a good way uh, I mean a good way to divide your time and to uh, to, to change your focus is to uh, to have a place where to, st where to study a lot, and then if you feel tired after a couple of hours or so, going to the library. That's a good idea when you are at university. Because as I was saying, seeing people around you working and, and spending time studying gives you this sense that, okay, uh, would convince you that this is, a, this is a good way to organize your time. Uh, and, and then, as I was saying, mirror neuron works. I mean, if you feel tired and you see other people working around you, this would give you new, renewed energies. Okay, so uh, yeah, you can you can divide your time. But when you're at university, uh, it helps a lot, a lot. I can tell. You. Uh, then uh, to to uh, to divide the time, uh, you can use also. Uh, the Pomodoro technique. The, promo, the Pomodoro technique uh, leads you to um, to use like short periods of time. Normally it's 20-25 minutes and then uh, uh, also like very short um, periods of relaxing your mind or to uh, do some exercise or things like that. Or perhaps to use mindfulness to, to relax your mind and to, to, to take a deep breath and to focus on the next thing. Uh, so, when you use the Pomodoro technique, I would I would advise you not to go for more than two hours in a row. Okay, so divide your time in 20-25 minutes, then uh, spaces of 3-5 minutes to relax, but do not take like more than two hours as a whole. Uh, when you see that you have been studying for, yeah, 100-120 uh, minutes or so, do a, a, a longer break, okay? Like take, uh, I don't know, half, a, half an hour to go for a walk. I and mean, in the longer time, in the longer break, try to do some physical exercise. Because physical ex exercise increases the sugar you have in your blood and helps you to recover when you have been studying in a, deeper, in a very deep way, okay? You have an app. Uh, that you can use that is tomato timers.com and if you go to Ikea or to uh, uh, the Deco or to places like that you can even find like a, a tomato timer that you can use to, to, to set it in your table okay so it's like a, a yeah one of those kitchen timers that you would use to to boil pasta or things like that so you just set your time 20 25 minutes and then uh, like a bell rings when it's time to stop, okay? Have you ever tried with this kind of techniques? No, never. Never. But in the in the class about time management as well, they also talked about the Pomodoro technique and um, gave us some apps. So I might try how it goes for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, try. I mean, it's a way to uh, it's a way to improve. Try it and then assess if it was good for you or not. Um, yeah, it, there are apps 
uh, I normally uh, try to use something that is online because sometimes with the apps, what happens is that it consumes a space in your your smartphone. So this tomato timers that come, it's online. It's an online version. So if you're starting with a computer or so, you don't even need to install an app. But yeah, I guess that Pilar gave you also some uh, apps to, to, to control the time. By the way, when you start with the Pomodoro technique, at least it worked for me. I started with shorter times. And instead of just taking the 25 minutes that the technique says, I started with uh, 20 minutes. And I did it for like a week or so. Once you manage with the 20 minutes period, then go for the 25 or half an hour minute, uh, time. Okay? So it's a question of getting routines. Uh, and it is very good when you, when you combine the list of to do things with the with these kind of techniques because you can uh, sequence your your tasks in a way that we're going to discuss later on but then you can decide okay for example if today i feel energetic and i feel fresh and i need to study uh, this that is kind of complex okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna start with this and i'm gonna take two periods on a row so 25 minutes as a, a very short break 25 minutes and then I'll change and I'll do something that is more mechanical and it's easier. For example, I, I'll review some notes that I need to add information and to search on some web pages, but this is something that is easier for me than just memorizing things or to study more like abstract contents. Then, uh, and this takes another period of 25 minutes. Then I'll do something else that needs to be written, some uh, homework or, or something that I have to hand in. So it's also a very good idea that you start by, uh, by deciding that the most difficult tasks are going to go first, and then the easy tasks are going to uh, be late, uh, later on on your session of study. So with the Pomodoro technique, uh, normally, for like difficult or serious tasks or more abstract tasks, I would tell you to take the first two periods and then with the easy tasks, the, 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 the next ones, okay? Because normally if I am saying that uh, it is a good way to organize your time, not to go for longer than two hours, yeah, definitely, uh, uh, for example, like uh, more abstract, if you have to study, I don't know, something difficult, physics or uh, philosophy or things like that, that are very, very abstract. Yes, do that at the very beginning. This also has to do with the Jerks Downson law, that uh, it's about how much time we can keep concentrated and focus on tasks, okay? Uh, normally, uh, for adult minds, the maximum time we can we can keep focus on, 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 on tasks is 20-25 minutes. This is why the Pomodoro technique also works with these periods. I don't know if you've ever uh, used the Tech Talks. Do you know that? The Tech Talks? No. Probably in class you've seen some of them. I don't know if you uh, noticed that the maximum period for which speakers are uh, giving their talks is 20 minutes. Have you ever thought about that? Or have you ever noticed that? No. Well, if you go and see them, most of the most of the TED Talks take just 20 minutes. And the reason why it's done this way is because of this uh, Jerkes Dawson law. Because normally we can concentrate for 20, 25 minutes, okay? If we uh, go further, then we're gonna start uh, 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 missing uh, the point, uh, you're not, you're not going to be so focused, you're going to uh, lose concentration. And this is something that has to do with the time uh, uh, an adult brain can be focusing on the same task. Okay? This is why I recommend you to use combined techniques. Okay. Uh, other thing that can be very useful when deciding how to divide your time is to first think about your learning style because every one of us uh, prefer different ways of uh, organizing information of uh, um, let's say um, 
different stimuli that we use to 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 gather and and, and to remember uh, data and things like that. So before you start planning time, it is a good way to think about learning styles. Okay, I don't know if you've ever heard about the uh, kinesthetic, tactile, auditory, visual styles. K T A V. Uh, yeah. Well, this has to do with uh, different ways we prefer for stimuli to uh, that, that, that the teachers or the professors use. Okay, and sometimes when we find out which ones we are stronger in, we can decide techniques for study that would would help us to concentrate when we are more tired. So. Uh, normally, what I do is to give some a set of questions to my students so that they can think about uh, how efficient they are with different studying techniques. And then when they think about, oh, uh, this works for me, but this doesn't, they can also use these techniques when they feel more tired uh, at the end of the session, for example, or during the whole time. So. Uh, since we are just the three of us together, uh, we're not going to be using the virtual, uh, the virtual classrooms that we have used in other formats. But, uh, for example, this, this is a set of questions that I use with my students when they need to think about their learning styles. Uh, and then, depending on how you answer to them, you find out if you are more kinesthetic, do you need more movement? If you are more tactile, if you need to touch things, if you are more auditory, so that means that you need to listen to things when while, while you are studying, or if you are more visual, if you are going to be helped by means of visual thinking or uh, uh, images or pictograms or things like that. Okay? So, uh, so for example, does the, does the fast? Would you use fluorescent color, color markers when you study. Do you use colors to underline things or to you use them? Sometimes to see what information is the most but important. With, with different colors or with just one color? Just with one. Okay, because if you're using different colors, that means that you are a very visual person. So, uh, People that use different colors are visuals. People that use just one color can be uh, very linguistic in the sense that they need like uh, keywords to focus on. Okay? If you use Irene, if you use different colors, it's because you are visual. So probably you have to choose other ways to uh, organize your uh, your study and also uh, to help you when you are tired. Okay? Other other thing, for example, do you drum on the table with a pen or with a pencil when you are studying? You know what I mean? Like to dar golpecitos. <laughs> do you drum or not? I don't, but I know that I like to stand up and maybe walk while st while remembering and studying for some tests. Okay. So you just movement. So probably you are more kinesthetic. Normally people who drum on the table are very tactile, so that means that they need to uh, to have to have things to manipulate when they study. So, for example, for for people who drum on a table, it is a good way to prepare like flashcards that they can manipulate, but not flashcards on the computer. That is something that refers to visual students. Uh, but uh, what I mean is that to prepare like cards that they can touch, that they can organize in different groups. That they can uh, uh, set uh, or that they can put it in different order. That will help people who are very tactile. Okay, and one of the uh, yeah, uh, how how would I say that? Uh, one of the clues that indicate that you are very tactile is if you drum or if you uh, bite your your pens. Okay, so people who bite pencils, uh, pencils or to drum. They, they are very tactile. They need things to manipulate. Okay? Then, for example, I don't know if it happened to you. Can you remember what a, where a piece of information was located on a page? Imagine that you're sitting on a book. And then you can, you can by the time of the exam, you remember exactly where it was 
or even the accompanying illustration. So it had a picture next to it, but then she can't remember the words in the photograph. Is this the case? You know, there are people that say, oh my God, I remember what it was. It was next to a map that would indicate blah, 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 but I don't understand, I don't remember the information that was on it. Is this your case or not? Yes. Sometimes, this is typical for visual people. Okay? Um, uh, if this happens to you, it is a good idea to use other kind of flashcards that can be done uh, with computer apps, uh, apps. For example, this one that is very nice, that is called Quizlet. Uh, so if you're visual people, if you notice that uh, uh, using images uh, or locating uh, information next to illustrations uh, works with you, I would tell you to use this kind of apps to organize the most abstract ideas or the most difficult ones, okay? Through, by means of uh, using uh, visual cards, okay? Uh, if you need silence when you study, that, that means that you are very auditory. People that uh, need to have silence when they study uh, can be also very effective if they have the chance to explain whatever they learned to other people. So for auditory people, it is very good to work on study groups, okay? To work together, to study together with other people. Because nowadays, neuroscience has shown scientifically that one of the best things to do to study in a deep way is to teach what you have learned to other people, okay? So it is, it is funny, but people who need silence when studying can be very good when studying in study groups because basically needing silence means that you are very auditory, auditivos, okay? So people who are people who are auditory, los auditivos les va fenomenal los grupos de, de trabajo, okay? So yeah, group study. Okay, then the other questions. Uh, people who tend to have the table neatly tidy. Uh, uh, normally they are very visuals, so uh, very visual people, sorry. So the ones who are very visual, as I said, uh, would uh, be uh, more happy if they divide their time to, uh, to use some visuals when they are tired. So at the end of the session, for example, if you, if you decide that you're going to work hard two hours a day, the end of the session when you are tired, then use something that is very visual. So like flashcards or illustrations or things like that, or images that you can uh, relate to the content you are studying. Okay, also, people who uh, prefer to study in natural light, normally they are very visual too, okay? And then people who draw while studying, like, I don't know, like, even if the draw doesn't make many, much sense, normally those people are very tactile, okay? So again, uh, use things that you can manipulate while studying things that are very hard for you. And then, I don't know if you use personalized examples to study the abstract things. For example, I remember a, stu a student of mine who had a hard time to study uh, uh, all the periods and movements and styles in literature, uh, would create examples where uh, he would do uh, uh, soccer alignments. Esto lo explico en español porque es muy complicado y me vais a entender muy bien. Eh, él lo que se hacía era equipos de fútbol. Eh, le encantaba el fútbol y entonces lo que hacía era equipos de fútbol, se hacía alineaciones. Entonces me acuerdo un día que me lo explicó y yo decía, no me lo puedo creer, pero a él le funcionaba fenomenal. Entonces decía, cuando ya estoy cansado y no me puedo concentrar más, lo que hago es imaginarme con los escritores y las características de, de un movimiento literario me organizo equipos de fútbol. Y yo le decía, vale, dame un ejemplo. Y me decía, pues por ejemplo, si estoy estudiando el, el, el realismo y el naturalismo español, pues pongo a Pardo Bazán eh, en la portería. Y la pongo porque como era una señora muy gruesa, muy gorda, pues iba a parar muy bien los balones. Y luego pongo a los que fueron precursores, los pongo de delanteros, porque eso significa que van antes en el tiempo. Y entonces ahí pongo, pues no sé, a José María Pereda, ya no sé quién, a no sé cuánto. Luego, los que fueron muy importantes los pongo en el centrocampistas, porque son los que distribuyen la pelota. Y entonces, como eran muy importantes, pues los pongo por ahí. 
Y entonces pongo ahí a Galdós y a Clarín. Y luego los que llegaron más tarde, pues los pongo de defensa porque ya están cerca de, de la portería del otro equipo. Y entonces ya la portería del otro equipo es el movimiento literario siguiente. Entonces me hacía mucha gracia porque él lo que hacía era que se organizaba una manera personalizada con algo que a él le parecía significativo para estudiar esas cosas que le eran más difíciles. Entonces, bueno, ya os lo he explicado en español, no debería, pero es que esto es como un poco complejo para explicarlo en inglés. Pero, I don't know if you use these kind of personalized examples to study things that are more abstract or that are more difficult for you. I don't know if you have like tips like this that we can learn from each other. I don't have any. Like, you don't have any? No. Okay. So, how do you study, Sara? Just uh, with paper in front of you or with your computer? Normally, when you have to organize your sessions, how do you do it? When, Just to see if we can have some, uh, some tips. When I have to study for an exam, I usually uh, either make my own notes or okay. my maps or whatever, or use the ones provided by the teacher. Okay. And uh, what I do is I I tend to read the information and try to make, uh, to explain it to me in a way that I can understand it better and, okay. and, me and, um, and remember it. And then okay. I... I imagine myself, myself like I'm explaining that information to other people. So that is what, what it works for me. Okay, great. So probably when you're at university, you would be very good at, with study groups because this is something that also uh, helped me. And this is a sign that you are a very auditory and a very linguistic person. So people who normally tend to think about How would I say this with my own words and how would I explain that to another person? That means that probably in, in the multiple intelligence stream, you are a very linguistic and auditory person. Uh, so, as I was saying before, that will help a lot if uh, you gather with other people after you have studied yourself, okay? After uh, a certain time in which you have uh, focused on your notes and reviewed your notes and so on, then suggest some other people to uh, review all these things with you. So a good idea, for example, would be when you're at university to say, okay, uh, gather a group of people who has to study for the same exam and say, let's say a couple of hours uh, to work alone and to concentrate and then an extra hour to review together. And then uh, a very good idea is to have like a set of questions, not only how you imagine yourself teaching that to other people or explaining that to other people, but at the same time, writing down questions uh, that you would, you would use for other people to clarify whatever you have been studying, because that can help you later on with your study group, okay? This is also a very good idea, like to divide time that you are alone and then study with other people. Irene, what about you? How do you study? How do you organize yourself? I usually underline the, the the notes, and I don't use the teacher notes. I make my own notes, or I uh, like my friends make notes, and I ask them for that, and I underline that notes and that's that. Okay, uh, so you summarize your own ideas with your own words. Yes. Great. That's good. And do you use any other kind of uh, Helpers, I don't know, like images or pictograms or, or flowcharts, yeah. like or not. Uh, sometimes when I explain, I explain to me the things I draw, I draw something or that stuff, but not, no. not in a not in a daily basis. Okay. No. Great. Okay. Uh, well, let's let's go on with the tips because we don't have very much time. But uh, yeah, w one thing that is very important is to be realistic and flexible about the time you spend studying. Because sometimes when time uh, goes by and you see that a deadline is approaching dangerously, 
you tend to do massive practice and to study for five hours in a row or things like that. That's horrible for the mind. Uh, so uh, it, it is much better to have these uh, these calendars that I would uh, that I have recommended at the very beginning of the session and to divide your time wisely and to be more flexible. Okay. Um, uh, and then uh, you can plan for everything. Sometimes uh, there are obstacles that come. For example, I don't know, you uh, one day you feel sick, or uh, there is something urgent that has to do with uh, meetings at college, or something that didn't allow you to study as much as you would, or you really feel, as I was today, for example, today I had an allergy attack, and I was feeling really terrible this morning, and I couldn't concentrate because I was all the time like itchy. My eyes were feeling horrible, and I couldn't take the, the time that I normally take in the morning when I am fresh, because I was I was I was I was dead really. So be realistic about the time you you will spend on each task and try to plan. And then if you see that you have lost I don't know uh, one session or so, try to keep on track as soon as possible. As soon as you can, uh, go back to your initial plan. Okay, and then focus on long-term goals. Uh, it, this is why it is very important to have this term uh, calendar that I was mentioning. When you are studying at school, uh, normally teacher uh, professors would give you like a, a, a well in advance plan in which they would give you the times you have to handle projects and things like that. Please make sure that for every complex project you start planning things like a couple of weeks before the due time. If you wait for like the two or three days before it is due, you're gonna be in trouble, really seriously. So try to establish this term plan, okay? So that you can have like long-term goals. And then something that, uh, as I was saying before, something that neuroscience has found out is that mass practice, for example, study for five hours to pass an exam, is effective only in the short term, just to pass that exam. That is horrible, terrible in the long term. And if you seek uh, for deep learning, something that is really useful and that helps you in the future, it is much better when you intertwine several things or areas uh, rather than focusing on mastering one and then move on to the next one. Okay? So uh, if you plan well in advance, you say, okay, today I'm going to take like one period of 25 minutes to just. Uh, review two problems that we made today in physics class. Then I'm going to take other 25 minutes to uh, review the notes that I took in, in uh, I don't know, in English. And then I'll have uh, two longer periods for uh, doing some research and finishing this assignment that I had. So try to uh, intertwine several things. Not try, do not take the whole period, if you're using the Pomodoro uh, schedule, do not take the four periods only for one thing. Okay? If you, this is why it is so important to have this week planner too, or this uh, not only daily, daily planner, but also like week planners. Normally, as I was saying, if you use this physical paper agenda and uh, you, uh, you see things that you have worked uh, that you have to, to do well ahead of time, uh, you're going to be able to intertwine tasks in a much better way. Okay? Uh, so, yeah, normally they say, okay, para esta semana tengo estas dos cosas urgentes. Vale, pues, let's say how I'm going to uh, interchange them so that I don't have to focus on the same thing for a long period. If you do that, at the end, you're going to feel bored, you're going to feel desperate, but you're going to feel really frustrated. Okay? So uh, even if we know that repetition and practice is good for learning, try not to do it all at the same time. Okay? So mass practice doesn't work. Doesn't work for real. <laughs> uh, then other thing that you're gonna have trouble with when you go to college to university is uh, say no to your social agenda. So uh, you have to practice to be very assertive. To decline politely invitations to do other things that are uh, consumers, and to uh, not to use uh, well, not to use your cell phones for like social conversations, or not to visit friends, or not to uh, go to 
uh, this activity that is much nicer than staying at home and studying, but you plan well and wisely in advance. You can, you'll see that you have time for everything. But uh, please remember not to uh, spend all your time in social life. I remember that when my child went to Norway to study, uh, he would tell me, uh, we talk about the three S, socializing, sleeping, and study. And I, uh, when I didn't plan wisely, uh, I had time only for two of them, for studying and socializing. So I wouldn't sleep too much. And that's something that is not very good for brain. Okay, you you need to to renew your uh, your synapse in your brain, and you need to sleep. Really. So uh, yeah, you have to be very assertive, and you have to be very careful with your Okay. Uh, as you were saying before, reviewing notes regularly, uh, the, the way you do, it's very good to refresh your memory and, and to see the topics uh, you have previously discussed in class. So, uh, and if you combine the reviewing of your notes with study groups, as uh, so I was saying, it is a good idea to have like um, some questions that you may ask to other teachers or to other mates for clarification when you're studying. A part of explaining to yourself with your own words, like have these questions uh, to ask the people in case there's something that was not very clear or just to practice, okay? And then, uh, as I was saying, this is something I repeated before. Uh, neuroscience has proven that teaching other people is one of the most effective ways to learn. So it's very good when you can organize study groups for the tasks that are more like boring, or that are more uh, time consuming or to help you to focus when you are really tired because uh, because of the this jerks Dawson law after two hours or so your mind is going to be declining on focus okay so um me paso un momento al español vale eh, lo de lo de la ley de York es Dawson lo que dice es que después de dos horas dos horas y cuarto la mente empieza a perder eh, focalización, ¿vale? Entonces, lo que yo hacía cuando iba a la universidad me ayudó un montón es, pues eso, yo me organizaba mi tiempo para estar sola, estudiando sola en esos periodos más cortos, en que entrelazaba diferentes tareas durante un mes. Y después, cuando ya estaba muy cansada, entonces buscaba a alguien con quien estudiar. Entonces me organizaba los eh, group study, los, los, los grupos de, de estudio, pues unos tres días a la semana o así. Y tenía diferentes grupos de estudio dependiendo de las asignaturas. ¿Vale? Y la verdad es que funcionaba muy, muy bien. Porque además, si dejabais lo de los grupos de estudio para el final, cuando ya estabais más cuando yo lo hacía cuando ya estaba más cansada, terminábamos teniendo un poco de tiempo de socialización. Pues a lo mejor terminábamos de estudiar juntos, salíamos de, de las salas de, la, de las bibliotecas, normalmente en las universidades. Yo estudié en, en Estados Unidos eh, durante un tiempo, entonces hay como pequeñas salas para, para trabajar en grupo, entonces podíamos estar ahí hablando y compartiendo nuestras preguntas y después lo que hacíamos era que íbamos a socializar un rato, eh, tomábamos algo, íbamos a tomar un café o una cerveza o lo que fuera, entonces terminábamos el día así y es como que eh, relajar la mente después de una tarde muy larga de estudio ayuda mucho a a focalizar todo lo nuevo que nos ¿okay? Bueno, y nada, eso. Okay, so my one of my last advice is to change subjects regularly and combine tasks. Okay, uh, and then if you use apps to build your own materials, uh, there are some apps that can be very helpful if you are one of those persons, as, as Sarah said, that uses this technique of explaining my, myself uh, uh, what whatever uh, I have been studying with my own words. There is one app that I want to recommend you that it's, uh, it's for free and you can find it online, that is EduCreations. EduCreations allows you to record yourself with your own voice when you are explaining to yourself about a topic while telling a presentation or narrating images. So you can, for example, uh, uh, use uh, a PowerPoint presentation to summarize content that you think that are more important and then go to Edu Creations and record yourself while you're explaining this presentation. And then you can keep all these materials to review before an exam. So if you plan well in advance, 
Uh, imagine that you are reviewing the notes of uh, the first unit. But you see that the exam is not going to be till two months after you have uh, you have been uh, dealing with this topic. Okay, so it's a good it's a very good idea that you prepare a presentation or something like that, or a Prezi or or a yeah a PowerPoint presentation, and then recording your own voice, keep this very short video or or material, and then when exam approaches, it is much easier for you to revise the materials using these edu creations short video, okay? And then you can prepare like uh, short pills to uh, to prepare your materials and then you can combine times in which, for example, if you use the Pomodoro technique, times in which you are focusing on little things and then times when you are tired in which you are reviewing contents that you have been already prepared with uh, Quizlet, uh, with the flashcards or with the creations or things like that. Try with this. It is a very good idea. Um, there are many students who really uh, use them. And then, uh, one thing that is just the last uh, tip. Uh, try to think uh, of uh, reviewing and reassessing your schedule and techniques you were using. So, by time to time, stop and think if that was useful or not. And try to, uh, to use new, new tips uh, that you've never uh, used before. For example, Sarah says, I'll try to use the Pomodoro technique. Okay, use it for a week or so and then stop and think, was it useful? Which day was not useful? And is there any reason why it wasn't useful? Perhaps it was that the topic was really tough or it's perhaps that I started with something that was easier instead of studying uh, by doing something that was more difficult. So stop and think about how it works compared to that, okay? And that was the last tip. I don't know if uh, you have any questions, but if you had no ideas to apply. So try to combine th different things, okay? Like the Pomodoro techniques with uh, explaining to yourself and to the bedtime time yourself alone and then with other people. Okay, I will try them and try to to do that reflection about how well it was. But thank yeah. you so much. Thank it was you. very useful. Thank you for being with me again. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, you'll find your way when you go to university. And also think about your learning styles because uh, sometimes it's very helpful. If you notice that you need movement, perhaps when you are tired, what you can do is just to record. Uh, your own voice and, and use podcasts or something like that and then go for a walk for half an hour while you are listening to the information uh, that you have been repeating, for example. So that you can combine different techniques. Uh, if you take into account, like this uh, uh, Jerk Stausson uh, Elo with the Pomodoro time, with your learning, uh, uh, learning style, you're going to find a very effective and good use to combine all together and to have like longer periods and more effective periods of study. Okay? okay? So, thank you very much for being with me and have a great day.